Never have I seen an F1 car this damaged before. Hey guys, what is up? We finally have some F1 2021 gameplay for you. I'd like to thank Codemasters and EA for giving me this opportunity once again. Absolute legends for giving me early access to the game. And I am here to bring you what is a new damage model from existing games previously in the Codemaster series. We now have an updated damage model and we're going to be taking the Alpine with Alonso around Azerbaijan. And a quick thing to mention is the forecast accuracy is actually adjustable as well in this game. Now there's a whole bunch of customizability. As you can see here there is car damage rate as well. It's the amount of times you get hit or decide to hit a wall before the simulation or full damage, whatever you set it to, starts to take effect. This is the new character models that they've included for the rundown of the grid. They've obviously become higher res, they're still a little bit awkward looking but a lot better than previous year's iteration of the character models. But boy, there is so much new stuff to talk about, it's going to be hard to squeeze this into three 15 minute videos as Codemasters has given us access to make. That is the current limit, so I'll try to squeeze as much information into those three videos as possible. For this video, we're going to be talking about the damage model, and then in the second half of the video, we're going to be diving into the career mode stuff that is now advanced customization for the amount of resources and cash that you give yourself or the AI teams uh, during the career mode. But for now, we're going to be talking about the damage model. As you can see, we are here. The graphics look stunning. That was my first impression. They've got a more realistic color palette now, but for this race in particular, as you can see in the bottom right corner, we're going to be trying to cause as much damage as possible, which is not something I usually try to do. But uh, today, I've been given free reign on just trying to crash into as many people as possible, and uh, we'll see how the car reacts to receiving that damage. And as you can see, Barge board and floor damage already. We squeezed uh, one of the Red Bulls into the wall. And uh, there is visible damage towards the right side of the car on the side pod. And that will actually increase the amount of drag. So that's what the damage does. It increases the drag uh, on the straights if you do damage the side pod. And there is also visible damage to the floor, but it's not so severe. It's pretty minor damage, just like indentations. Nothing that's really chipped away at the moment. But we're going to continue on spinning around. Uh, just try and crash into as much stuff as possible and BAM we've uh, damaged the rear wing there You just saw it turn uh, yellow and now it's turned red and if the rear diffuser turns red or the rear wing turns red You are out of the race it will DNF you and as you can see there's the visible damage on the actual floor itself uh, From earlier so it does actually have cosmetic impacts uh, to the way the car looks when you do damage the floor and that's an example of damaging the rear diffuser as it turned red in that circumstance again rear diffuser or rear wing will dnf you if it turns red or oh, the wheel turns red uh, as you can see the tie tethers are still working damage to the rear wing you have damage to your rear wing so yeah jeff will come over the radio and say you have damaged your rear diffuser rear wing uh side ports barge boards uh the floor he'll come over the radio and say all that when he comes over the radio to talk about side pods, he does in fact talk about drag. And as you can see, there's a massive shark bite in the right hand corner of the base of the rear wing. Uh, that'll be a massive leak for rear downforce. And the thing is, you cannot repair your rear wing or side pods or barge boards in the race. Now, for this example, I'm going to be causing a puncture. And in fact, they've updated the tire models for when you get a puncture. As you can see, the surface area of the tire has disconnected from the side walls and now it's just kind of like sagging around the, the rim of the tire and when you brake hard it'll actually flat spot the tire as well and you can actually cause these to blister uh, just by driving them too hard as well uh, so yeah, I was experimenting a lot with the tire wear and uh, how this impacts the tire so if you smack a wall the tire has a high chance of delaminating like this but if you just drive to the tires explode pretty much, there won't be a delamination or you just smack the wall like that. So yeah, a close up there is definitely some significant damage. As you can see, the flat spot is just, you know, it's like almost turning it into a square. Uh, we're playing Minecraft here in F1 2021. But yeah, it's just completely ripped off the rim of the tire and it's just hanging around freely in that sort of sense. And this won't happen for all tire punctures. As you can see, I think the rear tires are also punctured, but it's just deflated. It hasn't actually been ripped apart like it has in the front tire. And 
we'll get into more detail about the flat spotting as well because you can flat spot a non-punctured tire and here's just another close-up of that rear wing damage and this happens in all different areas of the rear wing too it's not limited to one area it's not like they've stuck the, all the damage that happens towards the rear wing in one area or the corner of the rear wing it can happen in the middle or the corners or the sides uh, and also a lot of the end plates that hang underneath the rear wing as well the side pods have taken major damage. Repeat, major damage. So there's just another radio from Jeff. And you can see the flat spot on the left front tire as well. So I wanted to take this damage model even further. We're going to be driving the Williams as George Russell around Britain. As you can see, there's a new fuel mode where if you run out of fuel, you can determine whether you lose all speed or just a small amount of speed uh, by using the hard and easy mode. And there's also time progression now that is new to the game. So I thought I'd just throw that in as well. Uh, really cool to see them updating these little features uh, before you enter a race. But as you see, we broke the rear diffuser, so that's an instant D and F. We'll go through the replay and see how much damage the car took during that crash. I tried to get on the grass to spin the rear round, but we kind of went in there sideways. But there's a lot of damage that uh, was taken to the Williams. As you see, the rear wing just absolutely falls apart. And that's probably the most damage that we've seen so far. Uh, even from Azerbaijan, this is a lot worse, I think, than what we saw in Azerbaijan with the rear wing. There's just not much of it left. Uh, before, we could only get a, sh a small shark bite out of the rear wing, but now that's like most of it is gone. As you can see, this is a replay camera. Uh, absolutely crash into a bunch of people there. That's an instant DNF like it was on 2020 when the wheel comes off, but we'll see the damage to the left side of the side pods and the barge boards. As you can see, there's massive shark bite out of the front barge board there. And the side pod, or just the whole body area, is just really decayed from that impact with another car. So there's a lot of damage you can do to that. Look at the massive chunk taken out of that barge board. And uh, yeah, just damage all across the side of the car. This is probably the worst example I could uh, create was in this Ferrari. There's massive damage to the floors. That's as bad of a rear wing as I could get it. That is probably the worst that I've seen on the game so far. I could not get the rear wing any more damaged than that. And yeah, just massive amounts of damage on the, the barge board as well there. As you can see, that logo is pretty much ripped off almost completely. Massive amounts of floor damage. That's like barely any of it left. And uh, yeah, just really impressive to see what they've done with the damage model this year. Now, here was another team radio from Jeff that is new. Safety car has been deployed. Slow down and maintain a positive delta. There's been an incident resulting in a high level of debris on the track. Caution, the virtual safety car has just been deployed due to a build of debris on the track. So yeah, it appears that the amount of debris on the track can actually bring out a safety car or a virtual safety car, which is fantastic to see that Jeff actually explains whether it was a stopped car or debris on the track that has triggered the safety car. This is as bad as I could get the rear wing on the Williams, but I've found a new camera angle. I don't think this was in F1 2020, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is a new camera angle, and I can see a lot of people using this. It's like a clearer version of the TV pod or the cockpit cam, so I can see a lot of people using this. So yeah, another minor detail that they haven't really mentioned before in the game. But now we're going to jump into career mode. This is some of the custom settings you are now entitled to when messing around with your career mode experience. This is in the expert mode. You can switch from casual to standard to expert. And when you go into expert, you can go into career settings and actually adjust with everything that you want in a career mode itself. You can prolong your career mode by making you as a player receive less cash, less resource points, and slow down your progression so that it takes multiple seasons to go from the bottom to the top, then you can do exactly just that. And you can even improve the amount of uh, resources the AI get to make it even more difficult for the hardcore racers out there in our single player. If you notice, there is a new character for the person who helps you with your career mode series. This is not my team career mode, it's just career mode. I think it might be based on what team you select to race for, but there are multiple characters that help you with the R&D development. I haven't seen Carl from last year. Uh, he was in the game to help you with development. he would let you know of any regulation changes. But this year, I think it might depend on which team you select. So that was his voice right there. This is the performance index. We currently have Mercedes ahead of Red Bull. My guess is that in the future, these will be patched to be pretty much the same, if not even to match the real life performance as Mercedes and Red Bull are currently going back and forth with uh, which car is usually the favorite to win the weekend. Uh, this is the new aero chassis powertrain durability 
uh, menu that you have for R&D. They have got rid of the skill tree kind of format they had from last year. And now they've gone for a visual approach as you can see what you're upgrading uh, as an image when you put it on the car. This won't actually change the cosmetics of the car, but it's nice to know that they've put some more detail into knowing what you're actually upgrading and maybe learn a bit more about F1 cars and how they work. So most of the UI has been changed for career mode as well. You saw the new UI uh, on the car itself. It's been changed from last year to this year. Looks sort of like the Halo graphics they use in real life where they shift up and down gears and show how much throttle input they are putting into the car. It's kind of like that, but just flat and at the bottom of the screen. And surprise, surprise, we have Will Buxton here giving us a race rundown uh, before the season kicks off, standing in front of the Alpine and Aston Martin garages. I don't think the audio has been revealed to us just yet, so can't confirm what he's talking about, so we're just going to move on from that. And another new thing we have here is new practice programs. So we have three new goals as per each practice program. If you complete those three goals, you will receive R&D development boosts for that designated upgrade path. As you can see, there's durability, weight reduction, engine power upgrades, and I think it's a bit randomized as to which goals you get for each kind of practice program. And I think they might change from practice session to practice session as well. And then that way you can aim for the ones that you're most going to prioritize uh, as to which direction you want to develop the car in. So just running through the tire wear uh, practice program right now, as you can see on the left hand side, you can see the three targets that you want to try and hit. And uh, that corner has actually been reprofiled. Bahrain has had a massive facelift and a little bit of a reprofiling through some corners. I find myself, due to the handling model of the car, for the double downhill left hander, using the real life raising line and not hitting the apex until the very last part of the corner, which is actually promising to see because it's more realistic in the way you're meant to drive these cars. At the moment, this Alfa Romeo feels very understeery, so struggling a little bit with that. In some of the other videos I'll be uploading, I'll be taking these cars in anger around some of the other circuits available to me. Uh, so stay tuned for that, subscribe for that, and uh, I'll be uploading as often and as consistent as I can, and uh, you'll be getting the content as quickly as I make it available for you guys. The curbs definitely have a different feeling this year. I find that for the flat curbs that the drivers abuse in real life, you're able to use them just as much in the game now. They feel pretty much as grippy as the tarmac. If you keep it in a straight line, you should be able to open up the throttle in no time. The cars overall feel like you can get on the power earlier than last year, which is a bit weird considering they're meant to have a bit less downforce, but the real F1 teams have been working with Codemasters to improve the overall handling model of the car, so if that's more accurate, then I'm all for it. And uh, I've actually had to train myself, train my brain to get on the throttle earlier coming through the exit of some corners even if the car's not fully rotated yet. And that's because when you accelerate you actually feel a noticeable increase in downforce. It feels like the car's getting sucked down to the ground more. So that's an awesome uh, little asset or feature that they've added to the handling model of the car for this year. If you'd like to see me try to drive uh, these cars as fast as possible, for most of the tracks so far in time trial, I'm ranked number one, so I've actually spent some time in the setup and understanding how the car reacts to different setup changes. For example, the brakes is a lot different, and uh, surprisingly, the tire pressures are very different as I've been increasing the rear tire pressures up full ball like a balloon uh, to improve the stability as it's like absolutely vital it seems in this game so far but i'll include more information on that i'll be taking the aston martin around spa using vettel's car and i'll be doing a hot lap in time trial trying to maximize the potential of what i know from the setups and also doing a race using that knowledge as well and seeing how we can perform in this new game as well we also had a presentation from lee mather discussing some of the new features including breaking point the new storyline of the game that goes over multiple seasons and including characters like Devin Butler who's going to be seen as the villain for what is the storyline that has been written by professional writers so that'll be interesting to see how that goes there'll be a lot of cutscenes that have been DGI'd similar to what we saw with Will Buxton walking through the pit lane there'll be a lot of that involving a lot of the other characters that you might see some are considering retirement as uh, he's unsure whether he deserves to be in the sport or not. You'll get to deal with those characters using voicemails and emails as well. 
Guys, please tell me in the comments what you'd like to see next in F1 2021 content, and I'll see you all in a brand new one.